Hello there, I'm GB Vegas, and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 19. In this tutorial we are going to focus on our NPC development. So this is a stage of development which will go on for a couple of tutorials but it's really interesting what we do. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this epic series and indeed everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now, we've imported some uh, characters from the asset store. So we're going to go one step further now and import characters from another source where we get a little bit more customization with what they can do. Now, some of this tutorial is going to be focused on something called Mixamo, and some of it is going to be focused on how to control what we bring in from Mixamo. So what is Mixamo? Mixamo is a very useful website which you can download models from and you can customize them on the website and then customize them further within Unity. So all you would need to do is go to Mixamo.com and you'll see something like this once you've signed up. It's free to sign up. Everything on here is completely free. It doesn't cost you a penny. You just need to sign up and log in before you can start downloading. So I do have uh, brief tutorials on Mixamo um, elsewhere on the channel, so I'm not going to go into too much depth, but I'll give you what you need to kind of explore and get going. So the first thing you're going to want to do once you're logged in is go to characters and you'll need to find a character which would best suit your game. So if we scroll down, we've got this guy right here. So if you click him, he will appear in this side window right here in the generic T pose. So we could import him as he is, but we need him to do some animations as well because we need him to walk, we need him to run, uh, all kinds of different things. So once you've got him in here or whatever NPC you want, you then go to animations at the top. There are hundreds upon hundreds of animations that you can choose from. There's many, many pages as you can see down the bottom here. We need, uh, for now, we're going to use just four. So let's go to the search bar at the top and let's start with the first one, which is walking. So once you find the animation, click it and then it will start animating over here. And you can see that he's kind of doing that repetitive movement. What you'll want to do, because the style of game we're creating and how we're going to incorporate AI into our game, you'll need to click in place. The reason we click in place is because he'll continually use this animation movement, but we're going to control his movement externally using something called nav mesh. So for now, if you're going to use the same character as me with the same animations, you'll have this guy and you'll have walking. And then what you need to do is click on download at the top. Now, there's a couple of steps you'll need to do to actually import it into Unity correctly. And if you go to format at the top and just click on uh, color. Uh, <laughs> can't even pronounce the word, Collada, right there. And then make sure it says with skin. Frames per second is 30, frame reduction none, that's fine. And then click on download. And what this will do is it will compile a downloadable zip file for you containing this character, his skin, and the animation. However, we don't want all of those in um, our import. We only need one thing, and that is the textures folder. This is taking a little bit longer than usual. It doesn't usually take this long, but it will eventually kick in to download. Uh, but what I have already done is I've gone ahead and got what we need. So make sure you get the textures folder from that download. You can see right there that textures. So it's downloading now. Uh, while that's downloaded, I'll quickly explain what else we need to do. Um, we also need to click download once again, and then change the format to FBX for Unity. And make sure it still says with skin because this one is going to be our actual character model. So this character model is going to contain the walking animation. So make sure with skin, FX for Unity and download. And if you go into that walking zip folder, you can see there's that textures folder. So like I said, just take that textures folder and place it into a random folder on your machine for now. Once you've got that, that's fine. Once that's downloaded, the actual model, take that model and then put it into that same folder. So you can see there, I've already gone ahead and I've got it right there, walking. So other animations that we'll need is running. So search for running animation 
And then there's plenty of animations to choose from here. So let's take that running animation and remember to click in place and then click on download FPX for Unity. This time we can choose without skin because we already have our character model skin in the previous one. We only really need this for our animation, but it's always nice to see the actual model with the animation. It's great, isn't it? So we can see the animation before, so we don't need to worry about the skin or anything this time around. Uh, we also need him to be terrified, i.e. if we're pointing a gun at him. So terrified. Another animation. So let's take that one. Download again. Without skin, FBX for Unity, download. And just make sure you put all of these downloads into that same folder, like I've said before, all of these. And the last one, for now at least, we need him to die because NPCs, you can shoot them. So if we shoot this guy, he's going to die. So let's take that dying animation, download, without skin, and let's take that. So like I said, we're going to stick with these four animations for now. And you can explore this a whole lot more. I've briefly gone through this. Uh, if you want to do more, more information on this, uh, I have a couple of tutorials on it on my channel. Just have a quick look in the mini tutorial section or the, you know, the help section. Uh, I've got a playlist just for tips and tricks, that sort of thing. So once we've got all our animations and our model and our textures, we have that in that folder. So heading back to Unity, let's now create a new folder for NPCs. So right click, create folder npc now this guy is actually called malcolm as we've already discovered so i named the folder just malcolm so let's drag and drop that into unity into our npc folder and it'll just take a second to import once he's imported we are then going to explore what we can do with him with those um animations that we've brought in so there we are, it's all imported. If you get this error, just click on Fix Now. The reason that's happened is simply because it's not imported it as an actual normal map. Now you may get an error down there to click on Console and click on Clear. Get rid of it, it's not a game-breaking uh, error. So I'm going to go over here to where our guy is. And I'm going to place our NPC just here for now. So let's go into Malcolm. And you'll notice only that one has the skin. Remember, we didn't include the skin on these. So this one, let's bring Malcolm into our scene. He may look a little broken. That's fine. It is a common thing I've kind of seen. It looks like something out of Assassin's Creed Unity. That is crazy, isn't it? That's scary in its own right. Uh, so if you get this problem, all you need to do is click the little arrow and all the materials you can see in here, we need to modify. Now we can't actually modify them because they are inside this particular um, prefab, but all we need to do is take them and change the rendering mode to um, opaque rather than transparent. Uh, I'm not gonna bother with it in this tutorial because I do have a tutorial on that as well. Um, in fact, I'll probably link it somewhere. Uh, but even though he looks crazy right now, don't worry, he won't look crazy in the end. What we need to take from this, though, is that walking animation right there. So hold control and press D. That will extract it out of the prefab because we need that one. Then go to this one, dying. Hold control, press D to extract it. Same again with the next one. Running, hold control, press D to extract the animation. And then finally this one, once again, hold control, press D to extract the animation. Now we have dealt with animation previously, so we understand how it works and what it needs to, what needs to occur. Uh, in fact, I'm going to reduce this guy down a little bit. He is a little bit too big for our scene right now. So that should do. So what do we do with him? Well, if we go all the way up here and click on him, you'll see he has that animator component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it completely. So right click, remove component. Now, I want to start this from scratch. I want our guy to be walking, and it really is as simple as just dragging and dropping that walking animation onto Malcolm. So what I'm also going to do is rename him, and let's have him as NPC001. We're going to have a lot of NPCs. We're going to have quite a lot. Uh, we could theoretically use the same NPC over and over just with a little modification, but we'll get into that as we get further into development. And if we now go to our animator up here, Failing that, we can always double click on the controller here. Either way, it will take you to this. 
Uh, now, obviously walking is the default animation, and that does also mean that we can attach dying, we can attach running, and we can attach terrified. And obviously the orange entry to the orange one is the default um, animation. Uh, it's also worth noting that let's click on the dying one and have that untick. So make sure we don't have that ticked because we only want that to occur once. We don't want him to die over and over and over. Uh, running, make sure we do have that looped. Terrified, looped. And walking, also looped. So walking, default animation, as I say. So if we press play now, we should be able to see our NPC walking. He'll walk on the spot because we haven't programmed him to walk anywhere just yet. But if I go back to scene view, you can see right there. So he does look absolutely crazy. Scary as hell. As I said, the reason he looks like that is simply because of the um, material that's on him. Uh, I am going to fix that. Well, I'll tell you what, what I'll do. I will briefly show you how to fix it while explaining what, we do, what we're going to do in the next tutorial uh, in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, we're just going to work with a couple of other animations for now. So if we go back to our animator, let's right-click on dying and set as default layer. And then let's play. And then I'm going to head back to scene view so we can see him actually dying. So you can imagine he's just been shot. And there he is on the floor. NPC is down. Uh, imagine if we were pointing our gun at him, he'd be terrified. So his animation would look like this when it loads. So we're pointing our gun, he's terrified, he's terrified. Man, that's absolutely creepy, isn't it? That is creepy. But then obviously running, um, yeah, I'm sure you know what running looks like. So I'm going to set this back to walking. So right click, set as default layer on walking. And now let's fix him up. Um, so we have the opportunity to change the materials here by actually overwriting them as an extract from that skin. But you can see each one has its own material. So we just need to be careful which one we do attach to each one. You can see body mat uh, is that one. Bottoms is bottom mat. Eyes is body mat, hair is hair mat, hats is hat mat, it's pretty self-explanatory really isn't it? Shoes is shoes mat, and tops is top mat. So to fix it all you would need to do is head into that prefab again, take each one of those materials, hold control, press D, and then at the top where it says rendering mode, change that to opaque. And now we just need to attach them one by one onto this section right here. So while I do that, uh, let's uh, let's go through what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So next time, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on giving our NPC some AI. So he kind of knows what to do. So what I want to focus on is, for example, our guy walks around the block. And we can actually do that really really easily it's not as difficult as what you think ai is always people are always led to believe it's a difficult um thing to create but it honestly isn't with the time and patience it's actually very very easy to do so there is our guy fixed and what like i say all we've done is just take the materials out change them from trans transparent to opaque and now he looks at least half decent. You, like I say, you don't necessarily have to use the same NPC I have. It's up to you if you do. If you don't, that's fine. But at least he looks a bit more normal now. Our guy is definitely not in the right comparison, is he? So what I'm going to do is actually going to take our guy and increase his size. There we go. So, yeah, like I say, next tutorial, we're going to be focused on getting our NPC to walk around properly rather than walk around on the spot. Um, it's going to be a it's going to be not a challenge, but it's going to be fun to learn how that's done because we don't use the same sort of mechanic that we have done previously. There we go. OK, so there is our NPC. I may change the height of this. I've, I'm not 
entirely sure yet. I'm not entirely convinced about how it's all going to be done. But either way, uh, yeah, might have fixed a couple of bugs next tutorial as well. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.